You know, it's oftentimes invariably when someone walks in the shop door for maybe the first time and they see this sitting here, this mud wagon that we're working on, they look at these, looks like runners underneath, and they say, oh, you're building a sleigh. Well, you all know we're not building a sleigh, but this is part of the final ironwork that I need to complete is on these rockers that sit on the leather thrill braces that is the suspension for this coach. Well, just ahead of these braces, both front and rear, there's a U-shaped piece of iron that fits right over the top of the wood, right about in this area. And there is a bolt, 5 16 that will go through and bolt this actually into place. And then there is a 5 8 bolt that will go through the bottom here, about like so. And this will trap the leather thorough braces in this area here that keeps this coach in position, kind of, sort of. There's another bolt in the center of this that will actually keep it from shifting front to back. But these saddles are something that I need to install. But there's something that's kind of different about them. But it seems to be kind of characteristic to this coach. And that is, why are things so non-uniform? Now I do think that these were probably original to the coach. Don't know that 100%. But there's only one that this top bolt goes across parallel in line with this big heavy bottom bolt. See this bolt here is pretty parallel and straight across with the crown of this iron. This one over here has an angle to it. It's lower on this end than it is on this side. This side is drastically different, much lower on this side than on this side. And then this end one is the same. See how much lower it is on this side than this side? Why were these not drilled straight across from each other? So this is one of those irons that you can see how crooked this bolt is. Well, this is the higher side. So it's the shorter distance here. If I put it on in this position, you can see this bolt is just going to clear this ironwork on the bottom of the rocker. Well, if I turn this around, the hole gets even closer yet, and on a couple of these, it actually will hit that iron. So on three out of the four, I need to weld this hole shut, and it actually needs to be moved up more into this area to where these bolts run straight across. Hopefully we're a little straighter now. Yeah, we're much more parallel and straight across on all of these now. I like that much better. Now it's just a matter of getting them bolted into place. Now another thing, and you're all going to remember this once you see it, there's a half inch rod that goes across the back that will carry the cover over the luggage boot. So if this is a typical boot, which I'm assuming it would be, there'll be covers that hang on these chains and then a cover that'll come up over top, fairly long so it can be raised up over the top of luggage and then speculating maybe possibly a drop cloth here to keep dust out of the luggage. I'm going to drop this driver's footboard to the front driver's boot, get it down out of the way, 
And you remember this cross iron here. Well, I have set it in there, but I purposely have not bolted it in yet because I wanted to make sure where these bolt alignments were for the top first. So the top of this cross, which I still think was an added patch, I'm going to try to incorporate into this top bolt. So I've done just a preliminary kind of eyeball and I think I can align that right up with the bolt that goes through the iron for the top itself. So I'll tap this bolt out and put a longer one in. Do the other side as well. The only hole that's not going to line up is this center hole. And I'm guessing probably when this was in a wreck and they put it all in, they straightened it up to wherever it was and stuck it in. But if I mark this, my other hole underneath is about right here. So I have my box square. So now I will take this all apart, weld this hole shut and drill a new hole in place. With this all being rebuilt now and structurally sound, I don't think it's a necessary uh, piece of iron for the integrity. It's just going to be for the historical part of what this coach went through and the repair work that was done to it that's kind of hidden, but it still tells part of the tale. You can see just how far off this hole is going to have to be moved. I'll weld that one shut and drill a new hole here and I'll probably just drill it in place once it's bolted in place so it'll be just exactly where it needs to be. So probably my biggest hesitation when I decided to put these irons in, knowing that this bolt here that goes through the framework has to go through this outside panel. So in my goal to take everything back to what it looked like originally, this bolt head I don't think probably would have been there originally because I don't think that cross iron frame would have been there. So this is going to be the most visible thing on the outward side of the repair work, but hopefully that's gonna be acceptable. But it's not like it's totally out of character. As in this middle panel, there's also two carriage bolts in the center of this panel that relate to the center framework and the iron brace that's on this body as well. And of course, it's only the discerning knowing eye that's gonna actually know about that bolt. And those people are limited but you are one of them now because you now know that that bolt wouldn't have been there initially, I don't think. So another piece of iron that I need to assemble is for this middle seat that is removable. And I have this little iron here that was original, still has the green paint on it. I'll have to duplicate the other one because I only have one. But I think it's going to fit right on this framework and this little J hook will slide down into it. And with the hook, that's what will keep the seat in place as the pressure from the passenger is backwards. And then as it wants to be removed when that time comes, it can be rotated up from the backside and released. So I need to make a duplicate of this. And this is 3 16 by 7 8 and I had 3 16 by 3 quarter or 1. So I took some 1 inch and I did grind it down to 7 8 to match this old iron. It is also 3 16 So it seems like this should be a fairly simple bend. We'll see. 
I did make a form that this fits. This wants to open up at 5 sixteenths. The hook that goes down through it is a quarter, so we want a little bit of room for this to move freely. So I have a half inch piece of iron and I have tack welded a 3 sixteenths piece on each side, which gives me my 5 sixteenths clearance that I need. I've marked the center of both of these. And I'm just going to try to take the torch and heat this area up and see if I can't shape it down to this shape. I thought about trying to make a top form, but then it comes to the question of how much time do I want to spend making forms for one piece of iron. Maybe I can just heat this up and do some bending and use this form to give me the shape that I need. Well, for the bottom bolt on my thorough brace clevises, saddles, whatever I'm going to call them, I'm going to change these hex head bolts into square heads. You've seen me do that a number of times. And then this is the side brace at the rear corner of this box that I need to duplicate. Well, these irons on the back corner box have two holes in them, which correlates with the two holes in this brace. Well, these two holes right here are drilled through this corner, and then this brace gets bolted to it. It'll mount up about like so with this bolt going right through this mainframe. Well, these type of irons were oftentimes drop forged and you could buy the blanks and finish them as you needed. This one here looks like this portion was taken from an old side brace and they split and welded this half inch bolt into it not very finely finished. So what I'm gonna to try to do is I'm gonna take a three quarter round stock and I'll neck it down for a half inch bolt, taper it down and play with it and see if I can't make this transition out of a three quarter round stock.
Well, this ended up being kind of a challenge. This was the original one that was split and welded in. So this one, the carriage bolt goes here and these are just drilled out big enough that the square shoulder of the carriage bolt just sits in there. So there's really nothing to keep it from turning. I did take mine and punch them square so that we'll prevent that carriage bolt from turning. My little point is a little different and I'm just a fuzz shorter in here so I didn't square mine off like this one was. I just left it round because I didn't want to lose any length. With this one welded in it's a little offset where I drew mine out it's a little more centered. But I think that'll be functional right side to left side. Who's going to know the difference except you. So now if this seat needs to be removed, it can just rotate forward and lift up out of these brackets. Or when it's in position and the pressure is back, it's locked in position. Well, that's going to wind up, I think, the basic structure of this whole mud wagon body. You now you go back to where we started, it's kind of made a little bit of a transition. I do appreciate everyone who has stopped by on their journeys, oftentimes vacationing this summer, to see the progress and to check in. I do enjoy visiting with you all, and it's fun to kind of touch base and put faces to some of the names that are in the comment section. So anyway, I've got a little bit of blacksmithing to do on the undercarriage. We might get into that next week, but we're going to kind of wrap this up. I do appreciate you following along. Thanks for watching.